Praise the Lord, choir. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord, church. How y'all doing? Good, 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 good. Testing. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, and I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Good morning, church. Please turn to Psalms 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear it, to hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I pray that everybody has a good day today, and I pray that pastor will, that will pray good, and I pray that Everybody gets home safely with no problems. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, somebody clap your hands and give the Lord praise. For I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let's just take 30 seconds and give God grace and give him blessings because he gave us grace. Come on, let's open up our mouths and give him what he is due. 
for as good as God has been, we can't afford to keep our mouths closed. But every day is a day of thanksgiving. Come on, somebody just give him some thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. So I got to say thank you for all that you've done thus far. Thank you for being the God that you are. Thank you for food on our tables. For we know that you're able. He is an awesome God. Just look over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, so glad to see you in Jesus' name. Look at somebody else and tell them, it's good to see you on this morning. Come on, greet your neighbor. Is that all right? We're going to sing about our Father in creation. The earth and the universe is in his hands. So come on, just clap your hands with us. song come on help us out right here let's go yeah we say father 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 we praise you jesus 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 we love you holy spirit yes we adore you yes we do one more time father 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 we praise you we praise you jesus Jesus, Jesus, we love you, Holy Spirit, yes, we adore you. Yes, First, we do. so Father, Father in creation, the earth and the universe is in your hand. We love you, Holy Spirit, yes, we adore you, yes, we Everybody do. say, Father, 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 we praise you, Jesus, 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 we love you, Holy Spirit, yes, we adore you, yes, we One more time, Father, 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 Father we praise you, Jesus, 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 we love you. Holy Spirit, yes, we are And sometimes we can't explain it, so we just say, yeah, 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 yeah. I say, yeah, 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 yeah. I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. We adore you. Yes, we do say, yeah, 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 yeah. I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I said, yeah, yeah, We adore you. Yeah, we adore you. Come on, yes, King Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. We adore yeah, you. We adore so last you. time, hey, say, Father, 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 Father. We, we pray, praise you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, we love, we love you, Holy Spirit. We yes, are, we adore you. Yes, yes we, we do. do. Come on, somebody, give him praise right there.
Amen, 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 amen. Good morning, church. We have a simple song that most of you should know. If not, bless your heart. But this song <laughs> sings about the Lord is my light and salvation, according to Psalm 27. Um, it's a very known verse, and we'd like to sing it to you all today. Come on, clap your hands slow with the beat. Oh uh-huh. 
everlasting God. You are the everlasting. Said our hope. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. How will we make confident in this? I will see the goodness of the Lord. How will we remain confident in this? I will see the goodness of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, church. Anybody else seen the goodness of the Lord? Seen the goodness of the Lord working in your life? Over this past week, even this morning, we, we are thankful. Thank you, uh, our youth uh, choir with our praise and worship team. Let's give them another. Thank you for ushering us in and reminding us of um, uh, Father, Jesus, Spirit, and uh, we, we are thankful for the goodness of God each and every day in our lives. Well, church, um, we want to take this opportunity to welcome some special people that might be joining us this morning here in the Legacy Center. So if this is your first time here um, worshiping with us, we would ask that you would please stand. Could you please stand if this is your first time joining us here inside the Legacy Center? Praise God. Praise God. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. If you would just remain standing for us for just a moment. The ushers are going to come around. They're going to give you a packet. Inside that packet, there's a card. We would ask that you would fill it out and um, put your information there because we'd like to send you something and thanking you for joining us here. You could have been a, a number of different churches this morning, uh, but we we're thankful that you rode down 301 to join us here. Um, so uh, we are thankful. Uh, after service, oh yeah, you can give them a round of applause. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you know, we, we used to love up on you and stuff, but, you know, COVID and all that stuff. But we'll, we'll, we'll give you some, some hugs and handshakes and all that. Um, but Pastor Sterling, our senior pastor, would like to meet with you in room 173 following services. We'll have a few snacks for you. Um, he'd like to just, you know, greet you a little more formally, tell you about the church. And uh, thank you for coming. Amen. Amen. And we didn't forget about you online. You may be joining us online for the first time on YouTube or Facebook. And so we want to thank you. We want to ask that you would just text the word connecting. Text the word connecting to 301-900-6555. Again, text the word connecting to 301-900-6555. And with that, um, well, before I turn it over to our video announcements, um, if anyone is participating in the Awana moment, if you're one of the, those people, one of those youth, if you could start making your way down to the front. And with that, everyone, please turn your attention to our video announcements. Calling all youth ages 12 to 17. Join the youth ministry from Friday, April 26 at 9 p.m. To Saturday, April 27th at 8 a.m. for our overnight youth lock-in. This will be a fun-filled night featuring a DJ, escape room, giveaways, and a great time of fellowship. Dinner, snacks, and breakfast will be included. Bring a friend or family member and don't miss it. The cost is only $10 per person. Be sure to register online by tomorrow, Monday, April 15th. DTM registration for Session B of the spring semester is open through Wednesday, April 24th. Classes begin on Saturday, April 27th. A schedule of classes is available online. Join the Missions and Men's Ministries on Saturday, April 27th at 9 a.m. as we work alongside Patuxent Elementary School to bring beauty to some of their outdoor spaces. Along with Patuxent parents and students, 
we will restore outdoor spaces students can use to enrich their learning. We will do light yard work and share the love of Christ in our local community. Registration is required. Middle and high school participants are eligible for community service hours. All Kettering members are encouraged to attend our 2024 first quarter business meeting on Sunday, April 28th at 12.30 p.m. This meeting will be hybrid and requires everyone to register. The registration form is on our website and closes Wednesday, April 24th at 5 p.m. KBC members and ministry leaders, it is time to update our online directory. Please schedule your appointment on our website through Sunday, May 5th. For more information on these and other announcements, please go to our website, KetteringMinistries.org. Click the Connect tab and select Announcements from the drop-down menu, or use the QR code, which is available as you access the Legacy Center and the Sanctuary. Hello, hello everyone. Guess what time it is? It is Discipleship Training Class time better known as DTM, and registration is now available. And there are several classes to choose from, which includes a class for men, classes for women, as well as co-ed classes. So for example, if you're interested in learning more about spiritual gifts, it's available. Or if you're in need of learning more about how to walk by faith and not by sight during troublesome times, it's available. Or if you're interested in learning more about the subjects of good and evil, life after death, the second coming of Christ, it's available. Or maybe you're interested in learning more about the importance of prayer and handling God's word better in your life. Say it with me. It's available. And to the men, there's even a class that is designed to help you to learn from your past, to come alive in your present and anticipate God's best for your future. And to the ladies, there's a class that addresses the question, who am I as a disciple of Christ? And another class that helps you to discern the voice of God. So as you can see, there's plenty to choose from to help strengthen your walk as a disciple of Christ. All you have to do is go to the church website, get more information, and then register. And for those of you who prefer to have the physical document in your hand, we do have discipleship training booklets on the foyer table. So let's be proactive about being a disciple who makes disciples by getting into God's word so that God's word can get into us. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, we thank God for all the announcements that you've heard thus far. Um, if you missed anything, if you missed anything, as you came into the Legacy Center, um, there were some QR codes that you can scan on the door to receive more information about the announcements. And uh, we, we ask that you would review those. You can also, again, uh, check out our website. I want to highlight one announcement that is upcoming. Um, the, the Youth Ministries Lock-In. Amen. So we are gathering together. Anyone who is 12 to 17, uh, we are going to be coming in here to the Legacy Center on Friday, April 26. We've got games and events and food planned for you. Uh, we've, we're going to plan some laser tag. We've got some uh, midnight chats. Uh, we're going to have breakfast. So we are asking that you all get registered. Uh, registration ends tomorrow. As you leave out the doors, we'll have our youth ushers uh, passing out some flyers to you just to remind you um, and any of our seasoned saints, if you, if you know any, little, you got some little children or cousins and nephews in them, um, you know, in, invite them out. Uh, make sure you uh, get them the information, okay? Don't miss it. Don't miss it. And with that, it is time for our Awana moment. Give it up for the AV team with that, that presentation there. 
So we are now getting ready to hear from our Sparks today. Sparks are first and second graders, and I'm not going to say too much more. I'm going to let them take it away. Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. All right, these are our, our wonderful Sparks group. They come out and show up every Wednesday in numbers. Um, and I'm so grateful for the parents because the, you know, they really give them the opportunity to come out and learn a lot. Uh, and they're gonna showcase for you what they've learned so far. All right. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. S is for P is for tell there's a lot that they have learned. It takes a lot to learn so many scriptures and remember it. So just give it up one more time for our Sparks group. Sparks were showing off this morning. I was like, what, what verse is that? I don't remember that one. <laughs> Praise God. First and second graders memorizing all of those scriptures. Come on, one more time. Thank you. Thank you, Sparks. So proud of you. Um, and I want to I wanna shout out our leaders too, uh, Sister Veda, Sister Mormon, and Sister Avis. Thank you so much. Speaking of volunteers, you know, there are, there are still opportunities for you to join and uh, serve sacrificially with the youth ministry, um, especially on Sundays. On Sundays, we have our mission friends who work with our four to six-year-olds. We have our children's church with seven to 11-year-olds, and we're up and coming with our nursery. So if you want to work with our, our babies, our smallest of the bunch, our zero to three-year-olds, please reach out. You'll hear some more information coming, but uh, you, you know where I am. You know where I be on Sunday, so you can find me. Um, we'd love to have you. Um, thank you once again. Thank you once again. All right, and church, with that, it is now offering time. Here at Kettering Baptist Church, there are multiple ways to give unto the Lord. We ask that you also remember our goal of debt retirement in your giving. One option is through e-giving, which can be found on our website, 
KetteringMinistries.org. For debt retirement using EasyTithe, select it from the drop-down menu. In PayPal, click Add Special Instructions to the Seller, type Debt Retirement and the specific amount. Another giving option is through text giving to 301-246-8018 and following the prompts. For debt retirement, text debt, dollar sign, and the amount. Our KBC app is another option and is easy to find by searching for Kettering Ministries on Google Play or iTunes. Yet another option is through Facebook by searching Kettering Baptist Church Legacy Center and selecting Shop Now. And of course, you can always give in person using the boxes available at each rear entrance of the sanctuary or by mailing your offering or donation. Additional giving towards debt retirement can be designated on your envelope. Thank you for giving. Let us pray. God, we come to you once again thanking you, God, for just this opportunity to have the resources that belong to you. And God, so now I I pray for each and every giver that they would give cheerfully, knowing that what they give goes to the kingdom. Um, They might not always see the benefit right here and now, but God, they are depositing something. They are putting a seed into something that will go on and and be a legacy, God. And so we're praying that each and every gift, each and every monetary gift is used for your kingdom, for the upbuilding of your glory, for your name, and for your name only. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you all help us clap our hands? Now this song is one that you all know. The song says, we love to call your name because there's power in his name. Is that all right? We're going to sing a couple parts. And when you find the part that you know, y'all got to sing with us. Is that all right? Come on, everybody, clap your hands. We love to call your name and something. Cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name. We love to call your name in something. We cannot explain that happens when we proclaim. There's power in your name
How many know that there is power in the name of Jesus? Something happens when we call on that great name. One songwriter said, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. I don't know what you have to deal with. I don't know what you're going through, but can we just put the name in the atmosphere? Everybody just say, Jesus! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on one more time. Let's give a hand clap for the Kettering Baptist Church Children's Choir. We have one more for you.
Praise the Lord. We thank God for our children this morning. Amen. Just giving it all that they have for the glory of God. Amen. Um, and just uh, kind of in a sense reminds us there's hope for the future. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Excited about that. So I, I see a, a, a up and coming choir and everything. Amen. Praise the Lord. We won't have to do this forever. <laughs> so praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Omar and the youth and children uh, this morning. Yes, sir. If you are driving a gray Nissan Sentra uh, and your Maryland tag number is 9FP9268, your car is still running. And if you'd like to donate it to me, I'll take it. <laughs> Otherwise, go turn it off. Great Nissan Sentra uh, in the parking lot with Maryland Tag. It is still running. So <laughs> I know you were in a hurry to get here this morning, but at least cut it off. Everybody at church ain't a Christian. Amen. <laughs> you might be tempting your brother beyond what they can stand it's like oh, man the car running the key is still in it this must be a sign from God <laughs> if you have your Bibles this morning Kettering and you should I want to invite your attention to Proverbs chapter 5 and Proverbs chapter 7 look at um, both passages on this morning and see how God will lead us. Um, do solicit your prayers this morning as we attempt to stand here and accomplish the will of God and strength that God has given. Proverbs chapter 5, we'll begin at verse 1. Proverbs chapter 7, also at verse 1. And when you find it, let us know you're there by saying amen. If you are viewing online also, uh, let us know that you have found Proverbs chapter 5 and Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7 uh, is just another chapter beyond chapter 5. So if you find 5, 7 is close by. Amen. Uh, so I just thought I'd help you all out this morning. Proverbs chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, the Word of God reads as follows. My son, pay attention to my wisdom and lend your ear to my understanding, that you may preserve discretion and your lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. In the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, and her steps lay hold of hell. Lest you ponder her path of life, her ways are unstable. You do not know them. Therefore, hear me now, my children, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Remove your way from, uh, I'm sorry, remove your way far from her and do not go near her door of her house lest you give your honor to others, your years to the cruel one, lest aliens filled with your, be filled with your wealth and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. I'm gonna stop right there, but I do wanna look at um, all of Proverbs 7. Similarly, they, they almost in some ways mirror each other, um, but there's a little bit, little bit more here in Proverbs 7 I think that we can glean from. My son, keep my words and treasure my commandment or my commands within you. Keep my commands and live and my ways as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister and call understanding your nearest of kin that they may keep you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words. For at the window of my house, I looked through my lattice and I saw among the simple, I perceived among the youth, a young man devoid of understanding, passing along the street near her corner. And he took the path to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and the dark night. 
And there the woman met him with a tire of a harlot and craftiness of heart or crafty heart. And she was loud and rebellious. Her feet would not stay at home. At times she would, uh, was outside at the times in the open square lurking at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him and, and with an impotent face she said to him, I have peace offerings with me today. I have paid my vial, vows. Uh, so I came out to meet you diligently to seek your face and I have found you. I have spread my bed with tapestry colored coverings of Egyptian linen. Sound like it's really getting hot. Um, I have perfumed, <laughs> perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloes and cinnamon. Come, let us make our fill of love until morning. Let us delight ourselves with love. For my husband is not at home and has gone on a long journey and has taken a bag of money with him and will come home on an appointed day. With her enticing speech, she caused him to yield. Uh, with her flattering lips, he, uh, she seduced him and immediately he went after her as an ox goes to slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks till an arrow struck his liver as a bird hastens to a snare he did not know it that it would cost his life now therefore listen to me my children pay attention to my words of my mouth and do not let your heart turn aside to her ways do not stray into her past for she has cast down many wounded and all of who were slain by her were strong men. Her house is the way to hell, descending into the chambers of death. Pray with me. Father, we bless you on this morning. We need you that we might be able to open up this scripture to the understanding and the application of all of your people on this morning. Spirit of the Lord, I am standing in need of you as you would provide strength for me to declare your word clearly and allow my mind to be clear and sharp, allow my speech to be understandable and perceivable and that the words, God, that proceed from my lips might change the lives of those who are listening. I'm praying, eternal God, that we would hear you on this morning and not me. Praying, God, that you would save someone who's lost and reclaim someone who's drifting. I'm praying, Heavenly Father, that even now that as we yield ourselves to the word of God, that it might prick our hearts to challenge us to live holy for you. Spirit of the Lord, when it's all said and done, we will give your name all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, for it is you alone who is worthy of it. So I bless you in advance for what you're getting ready to do in the name and in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I'm sure your eyes are a little perked this morning as I read the scripture. You're probably wondering, woof, where are we going with that? <laughs> and probably some of you are like, is that in the Bible? That was the word of God. Well, um, Kettering, we are well into the springtime of 2024. And uh, along with the springtime comes flowers blooming, rain falling, pollen everywhere, allergies kicking up. I mean, we got all kind of things happening in the springtime, and there is another element of the springtime that comes along that I believe it is, um, you know, important to talk about as well, and that is the, the lure of the immoral woman. Uh, and I'm not talking about a woman as a gender, I'm talking about this immoral woman as a spirit. Y'all still here with me? I know women was getting ready to throw stuff at me, so I had to clear that up. I'm gonna say, what about the men? Well, this is a spirit. This is an immoral spirit. And um, as we deal with this springtime, and I think today it's supposed to be approaching 80 degrees, and um, as it warms up, as is naturally the case, people begin to take off stuff. And so as they take off stuff, the spirit of love and lust fills the air amen Jesus and the sad part is that some don't know the difference between the two 
And if you pray with me, we'll make our way through this on today. And I'll open up to our understanding that we need to be cautious because the spirit of the immoral woman, or in this uh, pretense, I'll just say the immoral one, the spirit looms not just in the spring and the summer, but it looms all year long in the quiet, secret places of Christian homes, hearts, and families. Y'all thought this was just something that old heathens do. No, Christians got a problem here too. And unfortunately, if I can be honest with us on this morning, we rarely ever preach about it in church. And I was alarmed and I was blown away when I was looking at a survey from, I think it's called uh, Pew something, I can't remember the name, some organization does a survey, but they said that um, in their survey, I think it was a 2021 survey, 50% and above of Christians said that, that um, illicit sex was acceptable. Um, and I was like, 50%? And I was like, wow. Which tells me that we as Christians have a very skewed view of God's interpretation of sexual purity. And maybe it's the preacher's fault for not preaching about it. Because, preacher, you know that the people that come to church, spirit-filled, fire-baptized, running for your life folks, they don't always read the Bible. They're waiting for you to read it on Sunday morning. Amen, Jesus. I'm just talking to myself right now. Just talking, being Jesus, having a conversation. And so as I had... Um, the opportunity to open this up and hopefully I'm, I'm still I'm praying as to how to how to couch it so y'all just pray for me um, because one I'm not I'm not afraid of the passage because it's God's word but I do want to adequately present it so that we can all gain benefit from it y'all still here with me in this text, both texts, Solomon, who is the, the wisest man who lived on earth besides Jesus, he shares this insight from the perspective of wisdom to his son. And Solomon sends out a warning to his son and his children which helps me to know that this passage is not just for the men, but this passage is for all. He sends out this passage of warning to all who will listen and all who, and he encourages them, don't, don't turn from my words because these words will save you from some trouble. Amen, Jesus. And so I want to I wanna try to speak through the the oracle of Solomon uh, and talk to you on this morning from the subject matter, beware of the bait of the immoral one. Beware of the bait of the immoral one. One of the things that I've come to understand is that in order to catch fish, I'm a fisherman. Um, you have to use the right bait. Amen. Um, there, I can go to certain places. I can go to, say, a pond or a lake, and I can throw in a certain kind of lure or I can throw in a certain kind of bait, and I won't get not one single bite all day long. But if I change the bait, and I use the bait 
that is attractive and desirable for the hungry fish that are in the pond, in the lake, in the ocean, in the sea, they will tear that bait up and they will go for it every time. And here's, here's, the, here's the funny part. They don't have a clue that there's a hook in the bait. But I'm going to tell you something about me. I'm not a hook and release fisherman. So when I hook you, it's over. You coming home to the frying pan or the oven. You do not get a second chance. You do not get the pass go. You are done. As long as you are within the guidelines of size regulations of the state of Maryland or wherever I may be fishing. Now, if you're too small, you might get another chance. But if you, if you meet the mark, you, you done. I'm not putting you back. So as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about this, the immoral one, because the bait that is cast, once you get hooked, you don't get a second chance. You don't get to go back. They're not going to throw you back. When the immoral one hooks you with the bait, you are done. You are headed all the way down to the end of where the immoral one wants to take you, where this spirit wants to take you. You're going all the way to that. Y'all still here? And so beware of the bait of the immoral one. And as I was walking through this text, first and foremost, what we see here in both Proverbs 5 and in Proverbs 7 is a father's commands and observations. He starts off in chapter 5 and he says, pay attention, my children, pay attention uh, to my wisdom. He being the smartest man uh, who has all the wisdom, he says, lend ear to my understanding. Uh, I want you to listen, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. He says the same thing actually in chapter 7. My son, keep my words and treasure my commandments within you and keep my commandments and my laws. Let them be the apple of your eye. Pay attention. Keep them, keep them before you. Bind them on your fingers and write them on the tablets of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. In other words, be so, so close and so acclimated to the wisdom that I'm sharing with you that it is like a sister to you and to understanding you are my next of kin. And he says, pay attention, pay attention, pay, be alert, be, be alert, pay attention, keep these words. And I, I will say this in all honesty and all sincerity, as I have observed over the many years, many who have fallen to the lure of the immoral one, um, they have not paid attention. Amen. They have not listened. Amen. Some of you have children and you gave them advice and you said, don't, 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 mess, don't mess with that one. Leave that one, throw that one back. And you got some friends. Can we just talk? We just gonna talk. You got some friends, and and they told you about their their boo, their boyfriend, girlfriend. I said, girl, he got this, that. But I ain't never been to see his mama. And you as a girlfriend said, mm, something something funny about that. Am I right? And, and then you start analyzing the situation to help your sister out, right? And, and for some of the guys, y'all probably done the same thing. And he said, man, this girl, man, she on fire. You know, he went on and told your boys about it. And then they said, man, but wait a minute. But, but how come you can't never catch up with her? This is an online relationship? You mean y'all just be talking online all the time? He said, dude, you might, you might be getting catfished. I'm just... And you help them out. You says, hey, pay attention. And he says, no, no, man, no, I got, I got this dude. Right? They didn't pay attention. Girls, sisters, they didn't listen. And way down the road, they called you crying. <laughs> and you, you're like, what's wrong? And they telling you what's wrong. And you think to yourself, I told you. Didn't listen. Guys, same thing. What's wrong, dude? Man, that girl, it wasn't really a girl with a dude on the other end. I ain't, I ain't know. I told you, listen. Pay attention. And, and listen, as a pastor, I feel the same way. I'm preaching and teaching. And I'm saying, pay attention to the word of God. Listen to the word of God. And folks come to me. And I was like, didn't pay attention. 
This is what gets us in a whole lot of trouble. We don't pay attention. Listen. And Solomon says, listen and pay attention and, 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 and commit this to your heart and commit this to your living. This understanding, this wisdom that I'm sharing, Solomon says, will keep you from trouble. And he goes on and he, he shares um, here as he shares his advice. He says, um, I need you to internalize this um, information. I need you to hold on to it. Make this like your sister make it like your next of kin and then if I go back to chapter 5 he says listen um, verse, verse 7 I think it is he says, he says therefore hear me now uh, my children and do not depart from the words of my mouth D don't, don't throw away what I'm telling you what I'm, how I'm warning you to be, I'm warning you about the bait that's out there but don't throw these words away remove your way as far from the immoral spirit from get away from her as far as you can don't even go near her door lest you give your honor away lest you give your years away lest you give your wealth away lest you give your wealth to foreigners your labor over to foreigners don't don't go near don't leave her alone Leave the immoral spirit alone. Or leave the illicit activity alone. Unless it's going to bring you trouble. Leave it alone. It's, going, it's, it's problematic for you. He says, leave, leave it be. It's, it's going to rob you. And some folk have been down this road. You hooked up with brother man, and brother man knew he had hooked into a good fish, and he'd been milking you ever since. I'm telling the truth about it, Jesus. You hooked in a sister girl and she won't go to work to save her life, but she want to shop at every Louis Vuitton place in town. I'm preaching way better than y'all saying amen. <laughs> You're losing your wealth. You hooked up with brother man, sister girl, and next thing you know, you sitting down up in Marlboro and they said 50%. They didn't even bring 50 cent in the relationship. Now they're getting 50% or your 401k. Preaching way better than y'all saying amen. You better listen, my children. Listen, pay attention, pay attention. Call with, this is wisdom. Call wisdom your sister, your next of kin. He says, stay away from her. Stay away from this, this spirit of uh, the seductress, the immoral one that will lead you down an immoral pathway. Don't even go cl close to the door. Why not? Because she'll get you. You're not strong enough to resist her. This is, this is what he says. He says, and then he tells a story in chapter 7. He says, I was looking out my window. And this, this is my version of the story. I was looking at, he, was, he, he says, I was looking out my window. And he said, I saw a young cat strolling down the way he was he wasn't too smart he went right over there to her pathway where she lives and when he went over there she worked them this is my version of the story she worked them over and when she started talking her lips now this is not stay with me this is the the, the imagery is in the imagery of a woman and a man but the imagery literally is a spirit that's talking you into doing what god has told you not to do y'all still here but the way solomon lays it out he says listen she, her lips were smooth smooth it was like whew, whew, smooth and it was like honey and if you ever kiss somebody who had like honey in their tongue, uh, <laughs> Solomon said, "Man, once you get in there, you not want to come out. It's you going. You trying to get all the honey. You all of a sudden you turn into Pooh Bear. You trying to get all the honey." <laughs> So he says, listen, he says, listen, he says she was working him over her. She was talking to him smooth. She was dripping that honey all over him, all over her lips was dripping honey. And then she came to him and said, man, I've been looking for you. And listen, he said, she says, I've been looking for you. 
and you're, you're special. You, you, you're the only one. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You're the only one. Lying herself, because Solomon said, well, I was watching her, this girl don't never stay home. She always in the street, chasing after everybody. Solomon said, I've been watching it. Y'all read the text. Let me read it back to y'all. Y'all, y'all look at me like I'm making stuff up. Let me. She was loud, verse 11, chapter 7, verse 11. She was loud. She was rebellious. Her feet won't stay home. She always in the street, all the time outside, at times in the open square, lurking at every corner. Then she caught him, kissed him with an impotent face, with, with a, trying to be like a straightforward face. Then she said, I, I, got, I got peace at home for you. She started smooth talking. And she lures him in. Today I've paid my vows. I'm a, I'm a good Christian woman. I paid my tithes. I'm doing my stuff. I went to church, girl. They be talking to you. Can I talk for real, for real? Because I really need to talk to my church people because church people, we, we, we are vulnerable. Lord have mercy, we're vulnerable. Somebody say we went, they went to church, all of a sudden, ha. Ah. You get all weak in the knees because they went to church. There's a lot of devils in church. Okay? Don't let that fool you. And listen, remember this is bait. So <laughs> if I'm baiting the hook, I got to make it look like it's something you want. You want a church girl? I'm churchy. <laughs> you want a church dude? But I was praying for you this morning, girl. I was on my knees praying. I was... Me and Jesus, we just like that. No, they not. Lying is bait. Beware of the bait. So she, she, Solomon says, this is, this is what I saw. This was his observations. I saw this dude, and he went all the way down, and, and she, she done grabbed him up. She kisses him. Um, she, she starts, you know, just like laying it on. Um, and he says, when, I, when, it, when it was happening, in, um, I think, chapter 7, verse 8 and 9, somewhere around there, he says it was happening at night. It was passing along the street near the corner. She took the path to his house. Look at verse 9. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black, and the dark. Do you think it was an accident that he put all of those adjectives in there about the time of day and when it was? Because that's when the freaks come out. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I'm really trying to help y'all. I really am. When it's dark, when it's quiet, when ain't nobody around, when they can separate you from your friends and from your family, and then they can abuse you and misuse you and take you for granted because nobody is there to give accountability to, and you don't have... Ah. And I know, I know what's happening right now. See, y'all think preachers don't know what's going on. I know there's a lot of online stuff happening. And, and my, my mature Christians have, have bought into it too. But see, some mature Christians are pretty smart because at least, Lord Jesus, help me God how to say this the right way. They done figured out you ain't getting my social security or you ain't gonna mess that up. So we just gonna be friends with benefits. Amen. We're going to be immoral, but I'm keeping my social security. You ain't messing that up. I'm preaching the real truth. I ain't lying to y'all. I'm telling you what I know. And this immoral spirit is out there to lure you. And I just want, I'm, I'm, I'm standing here to say, beware of the bait. Don't take the bait. Solomon said, I watched, this, I watched this young guy that was devoid of understanding take the bait. It was, it was, it was in that, you know, and this is, like I said, that's when the, that's where the enemy wants to work. He wants to work in the quiet, in the secret places, in, on the secret app, on the secret phone that you hiding in the car, on the, in the secret stuff. Y'all hear what I'm saying? This is where the immoral uh, spirit is taking um, husbands from their families and wives from their families and young 
Christian women and young Christian men and drawing them away in the darkness, in the twilight, in the hidden places and spaces. And there's so they, they've got it such now that in these hidden spaces and apps, they've even encrypted them so that nobody else can come in behind and hear what you said and saw what you wrote or saw what you typed. It's all to protect you so that you can be immoral more secretly. We got a whole culture that's helping you be immoral. Beware of this immoral spirit, the immoral one. The bait is out there to get you and to take you. After we see the father's commands and his observations, the next movement of the text that I want to look at is, is, is the flatteries and the enticements of the seducer. Stay with me, y'all. I know, I know this is hard for some people because he's making you start to look at each other in the pew like. <laughs> he talking about you. <laughs> I'm just preaching a word. If it's talking about you, that's Jesus. That ain't me. I don't... Verse 10 says, the woman who met him she, she, was, she was dressed, she had the attire of a harlot, and she had a crafty heart. She, she was enticing. Um, the imagery here is that the, the dress code or the attire was attracting to this young man. And... We're, we're not a lot different from the young man because it attracts, attracts us. And, and, I, and I was teaching a session yesterday um, at a men's conference, and I was saying that we have to, you got to know what you're, what you're attracted to so you know when to run. So if you happen to be attracted to a certain size, shape, whatever, you need to know that. So when you see it, come and run. This, this woman was, she had the attire of a harlot which was attractive to this young man and he was drawn in by that. She enticed him, she began to entice him. She was, he was drawn in by that. Um, she, she was crafty of heart, she was, she, was, she was sharp. She knew where she was going. And listen to me, um, this spirit of, of immorality knows where it wants to take you, but it's slick. It will couch itself in a lot of nice places to make you um, be deceived about what it really is. And it'll, it'll affix itself in various um, relationships that seem to be safe. But, 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 the, but, but it's, it's baited. It, there's a hook in it. Uh, can, can I be for real, for real? Some, some relationships we really just need to stay away from all together. Just like, you know what? Yeah, you my friend from afar. Because I, I can't be a friend up on you. You, you, you. That won't work. So we, we need to be, but we need to know what, what we're vulnerable to. So can I, can I meddle for just a moment? In, in marital relationships, and I know some people are you still have your friends, I got my friends. No, we need to understand everybody can't be the friend in the marriage. Just can't. Because some friends got some ulterior motives and some friends have, have this immoral spirit moving through them. And they will become the enticing bait that will draw you away at the opportune time. And can I t tell you this? The devil is very patient. The spirit is patient. He ain't trying to rush up on you real quick. He's patient. He'll wait. I see you. I see what you. I see what you keep looking at. Taking notes. I said that website you keep going. Yeah. You, every time you get to that. Yeah. I see. He's patient. He's tracking you, so that he'll know how to execute his plan against you, so that you ultimately will fall into the immoral spirit's trap. This um, flatteries are almost over the top. Um, she, she's, she's loud and rebellious. 
Now, there's two things about that. Almost, to me, that sounds like it's a distraction and that's not an attraction, but some folks like loud and a rebellious folk. They do. Um, I've talked to some young ladies and they say, I like the bad boys. I like the bad boys, you know, the boys with the motorcycle and the tattoos and stuff. I want, my, I want me a bad boy. Well, bad boy is bad. Keep that in mind. <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, um, it, that, that might look attractive because you know got the muscle shirt on and got tattoos all over and all that. But but and then I'm not saying everybody got tattoos is bad. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But if that's the bad boy and he the one out in the streets gunslinging and all that, he's a bad boy. That's what you're gonna get. You don't just get to have the image and then expect him to be nice to you. I'm trying to help some of my people. And if you, and if on the other side, if you like the loud girl, don't be complaining when she loud on you. You're like, girl, turn it, turn it down, turn it down. Now that's what she is. She a loud girl. She loud everywhere. Go to the store. She loud. She fussing with the clerk. She fussing with the waiter. She loud. She just boisterous. She got something to say about everything. If that's what drew you, that's what you got. So don't complain. Say, thank you, Lord, for this loud woman. <laughs> this woman is loud. She's rebellious. At times, she's outside. She's all over the place. She's lurking around, all this stuff. Listen to her flatteries, though. Her, her, she says, I have peace offerings with me. I come in peace. I didn't come to mess up your Christian life or relationship. I come in peace. I paid my vows. I've done all my Christian duties. I'm good. Um, I came out to meet you. Diligently, I was seeking your face. I, was, I, I looked all over, couldn't find nobody. Heaven must be missing an angel. <laughs> it's a flattery. This is all flattery. Just, just pumping your head up. Listen, this, this, this is heavy duty stuff. She said, I, I, I have found you. Out of all the people in the world, I found you because you're so special. I mean, I've been online for 10 years and I haven't found anybody whose profile matches up like yours matches up with mine, I think we may be soulmates. Can you send me $200 so I can? <laughs> I'm really trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. She goes on. She said, I, 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 I made my bed up this morning and I spread it around with nice sweet smelling stuff I have the Egyptian linen a 6,000 thread count we gonna slide in the bed I perfume the bed it smells good everything cinnamon and myrrh and all that so come let us let us let us take our feel of love until the morning <clears throat> now here's what she's offering she's offering love but you don't understand it just looks like love there's a hook in it I told you when I go fishing I put a hook whether I use a lure if I use a rubber like a little rubber snake a little worm looks like a worm I put a hook in it a big hook in it and I bury the hook in the rubber in the silicone part of the worm and so even if the fish was smart enough to see the hook, he wouldn't see it. He won't know that he has been hooked until he takes the bait and clamps down on it. And when he clamps down on the bait, the hook will push through the rubber and right into his, right into his top part of his mouth. I know this sounds pretty cruel, but I'm going to eat him. 
OK. It's bait. And if I, if I use live bait, I'll run the hook through the live bait. There's a hook in it. But it looks like a, just a, it looks like a minnow swimming, just an old minnow swimming by himself. And if the fish was smart, if he had listened to his mother, his mother probably told him, don't mess with no minnows swimming by themselves because minnows don't swim by themselves. But he was hungry. He said, I got the head at. Oh, gotcha. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? She set the bait. All the tapestries, all the lovely flatteries and all that. And I mean, it sounds good. And then she tells them it's love. This is love. We're going to have some, we're going to have love. This is going to be beautiful. It takes more than a sweet smelling bed and Chinese, I mean, I'm sorry, Egyptian sheets to have love. That's not love. It takes more than that. A whole lot more than that. And so um, <laughs> she, she invites him on in. Let us delight ourselves. Let's have some fun because, you know, sin is fun. And, and that which is immoral seems fun at first but it's as the scripture said earlier in Proverbs 5 her her words are smooth like silk at the beginning but in the end it's like wormwood when you bit into it it was like honey but later on in the in your mouth it turned into wormwood in other words it seemed like it was good at first but then after you got into it you found out this ain't what I thought it was but it's too late then because you've already taken the bait and so these flatteries get him. And then finally, after the flatteries and the enticements of this seducer, and I mean, she lays it on him here in the text. I mean, we, I, I, what the part that really gets me is when she says, my husband is gone. <laughs> okay, um, I was going to skip that part, but the Lord said, no, don't skip that part. She said, my husband is gone. In other words, we have an opportunity to be immoral and no one will catch us. This is the way the enemy works. He presents you an opportunity, the appearance of a window of opportunity where no one will catch you. You can do this. We're on the other side of town. Nobody knows. You've, you've, got, you've got a secret website that you go to. Nobody has the password to your phone. In fact, you got eye recognition, DNA recognition, fingerprint recognition. They got to have some hair from your backside of your head and all that to get in your phone. You know you're all alone. Secret opportunity. I'm trying to really talk to us because this is where we get trapped all the time. Every, not just immoral sin, all of our sin. We always think ain't nobody looking. We think we have the opportune time. And the enemy is going to tell you, here's the opportune time. Here's your chance to do against what God has called you to do. Here's your chance to be immoral and enjoy yourself because God just don't want you to enjoy yourself. And she says, look, my husband's gone. And she doesn't just say he ain't home. She said he took a big bag of money, which means he's going to be gone for a long time. We got plenty of time. And we ain't never going to get caught. That's the whole implication behind this. But that's, that's the lure of the immoral one. That's the bait of the immoral one to cause you to believe that you can get away and no one will know. Can I share something with you? We serve a God who knows everything, sees everything, all the time. He, you, you don't get nothing past him. He sees all and knows all, so even in the dark, he, he still sees. Y'all here with me? Even in the secret, he still sees because there's no secrets with him. He, he is the Lord. He's above all. He knows all. He's omniscient. That means he knows everything. You can't sneak anything past him. Don't let the devil cause you to believe I can get over on God. You can't. Don't fall for it. Hear my words. Take this wisdom to heart. 
And even if you sit here saying, Pastor, I'll never do nothing immoral, even if it's just a sin issue. Don't take the bait of the devil. Don't take the lure that's being cast your way to cause you to believe I can get away with this and nobody will ever know. God knows. And guess what? Even if everybody else knew, neither one of them can judge you, but God can. Neither one of them can change the trajectory of your life, but God can. Neither one of them can punish you like God can. So she says, my husband ain't home. He ain't going to be gone a long time. We good. And listen, listen to this. So he, the next movement of the text is the fall of the unwise. Now here's the funny part about it. While the woman is telling the man that ain't nobody going, no. Solomon is watching all this out his window. So he knows. He's seeing it. And so with the enticing speech, verse 21, she caused him to yield. There you go. This is where when I'm standing on the bank or I'm standing on the boat, I say this, gotcha. Hook is set. Gotcha. That means you ain't going nowhere. Except unless I release the pressure and give you some room to wiggle off the hook, which I don't do because I'm going to eat you. <laughs> Y'all still here? So he yields to the bait. With the, her flattering lips, she seduced him, verse 21. Immediately he went after her as an ox goes to the slaughter. Now, that's not a pretty picture. That didn't sound like what was getting ready to be set up. Didn't it, this didn't sound like a slaughter opportunity. This sounded like it was going to be love. But it's set up. It was a trick. It was, it was a hook inside. And now he's immediately gone like an ox to the slaughter as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Till an arrow struck his liver as a bird hastens to a snare, he did not know it would cost his life. For the challenge that we have with this immoral spirit, you don't know what it's going to cost you. The moment, the temporary pleasure that you get out of the moment is going to cost you something. In this case, as Solomon articulates it, it's going to cost him his life. As we read earlier, it's going to cost his wealth. It's going to cost him his reputation. It's going to cost him uh, enormously that even his wealth, his goods, his labor, everything will be turned over because now he has sold himself out to the immoral spirit and the immoral spirit now has control of his life. I talked to a guy yesterday and he was, talk, he was telling me um, that he had got hooked into a, a pornography. And he said, dude, I was so deep in this. He says, nothing else mattered. Nothing else mattered. He said, I, had a love, I got a lovely wife and I, she didn't even matter to me. He said, pornography had me so bad I could lay next to my wife and had no desire for her whatsoever. Because all the imagery and all the, the promises of pornography drew me and drew me and drew me and I was sold for it. I said, man, that's a bad place to be. That's what I'm thinking to myself. I didn't say that to him. But I'm thinking to myself, that's really not, that's a really bad place to be. But I guarantee you on the front end, he never thought it would end up like that on the back end. This immoral spirit has a plan for you and it's not for love and it's not for joy. It's, it's your slaughter. It's your undoing. It's your unraveling. It's the ruining of your testimony as a child of God. It is to destroy you from the inside. It is to cause you to doubt your integrity in life and your choices. It is, is, it is to disrupt your stability. It is to cause you to, to, to feel like, you know what, you're unworthy and un, un, unacceptable in the society and the culture. It'll mess you up in every dynamic and way that you could even imagine. And to this, um, this text, in essence, says it's like an arrow striking the liver. You, you, that's it. He didn't know it was going to cost him his life. Solomon comes back and says, therefore, listen to me, my children. Listen, 
Listen to me. Listen to me, he says, my children. Pay attention to the words of my mouth and do not let your heart turn aside to her ways. For she has cast down many wounded. A lot of people have been destroyed by immorality. We have seen it in the church. We've seen it on the news, high-ranking officials, high uh, powerful preachers and pastors whose churches, whose life was destroyed by immorality. And let me help you with this one before you point all the fingers at the pastors. Trust me, it ain't just pastors that's immoral. There's people in the pew that are immoral too. And so, but, but all of it displeases God. And all of it will bring destruction to your life and disgrace to the kingdom of God. And it brings a bad reputation about who God is and what God has the ability to do. Listen to the instructions. Give heed to it. Bury it in your heart that I'm not going to be the one who allows the immoral one to draw me away. No, no. I'm going to trust God to provide for me what he has for me. And if I don't have it, in the time that I want it, I'm taking my request to God. I'm not going to the immoral woman's house and say, can you satisfy for me what God already has for me? No, don't let the immoral woman slick you. Don't let them, them honey dripping lips get you. Her plan for you is your destruction, for your death, for your undoing. Listen, she's cast down many wounded, and all who were slain by her were strong men. The reason why I like that part is because there's so many people that say this. Ain't going to happen to me. Mm -mm, I got this. Now, that's some other dudes. They, was, they wasn't careful. Other, them other ladies, they, they, they weren't careful. But I'm, I'm smarter than that. You're not smarter than sin. You hear me what I'm saying. Sin will get you too. Let everyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. If you think that, that, that you know what, I got this. And, and let me say this one too. If you think that standing against immorality or sexual immorality even in this particular case, if you think that ain't even an issue for you and you think I got that one, that's not one of the sins I struggle with, beware of yourself. Because if that's the thing you do best, the enemy wants to get you in that. Let's imagine for a moment we're at war and, and your best weapon is standing against sexual immorality. That's the best weapon you have. And I'm the enemy and I come and I unseat you in the best weapon you have. I take out your heavy artillery. That's your heavy artillery. I take out your heavy artillery and I cause you to fail in that. Now what you gonna fight with? You got nothing else to fight with. I just took you out in the thing that you thought you was the strongest in. And so now you're defeated. You won't wave the flag. You give up because I got nothing else to fight with. So stand strong in the Lord, in the promises of God. Don't let the immoral spirit draw you away. Don't, don't think that you got, you don't have it. Sin takes on all the strong people. Sometimes, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, you just got to recognize and acknowledge I'm weak. I'm weak. God, I need some help standing. God, if you don't give me the strength, I'm going to fall. And not just to sexual immorality, to sin, period. Because some of us think, you know, I'm, I'm so upright, I'm so righteous, I'm so good, I got everything. No, you don't. Sin does not discriminate. We're all, we're all subject to it. As long as you're in this flesh, you're subject to sin. But let me listen. The spirit of immorality is running rampant in our society and in our culture, and it's not new. I don't want you to think this is new. Oh, this is new, man, all this stuff. No, this stuff been going on ever since the fall of man, all the way back. But I want to warn you. I, I, I just come to warn you, beware of the bait of the immoral one. Because ultimately, no matter how strong you are, it's coming for you too. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? If I can go back to my fishing analogy, 
I don't really care whether I hook a 40 pound fish or a five pound fish. Because when I go fishing, I generally know what I'm fishing for and I, I assimilate the test line of my reel. In other words, the, the fishing line has different weight capacities. So I adjust the weight capacity to the type of fishing that I'm fishing for. So if I'm fishing for 40 pound fish, I got 60 pound test line, which means you ain't breaking this unless you 60 pounds or better. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm just using my own analogy and I'm not as smart as the devil, okay? But in my own analogy, I'm not gonna throw a 10 pound test line out and be trying to reel in a 65 pound fish. I'm just not gonna do that, that's not smart. I'm gonna lose that fish. And the devil's not gonna throw a lightweight on you either if you happen to be a heavyweight. So beware. Beware of the bait of the immoral one. Father, thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you that you have imparted unto us your wisdom and your Holy Spirit that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And it is my prayer on this morning, Heavenly Father, that if there's anyone here under the sound of my voice or anyone listening via live stream who has not trusted you as personal Lord and Savior, who does not have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of them, it is my prayer on this morning, God, that you would allow them to accept you as Lord of their life, that they would invite you in, that you might save them and redeem them from the very pit of hell. God, I'm praying this morning that for those that are already born again, that that you would empower them on this morning, God, to repent of their sin. I know that they've already given their heart to you, but Lord, in the process of life, sometimes we sin, sometimes we fall. Somebody this morning might be in that position where they have faltered, that they've stumbled, that they've, they've given in to the immoral one. They've given in to the sins of this world, and God, they need to repent of where they are, and they need to come back to you and renew the broken fellowship. So, Spirit of the Lord, I'm praying that you draw them, that you would give them the honesty, the integrity, to confess this morning that I need you, Lord. I need you to clean me up. I need you to deliver me from this immoral one. I, I want you, to, Lord, to deliver me from this spirit that keeps drawing me away from living a righteous life before you. Spirit of God, have your way in this place and amongst your people. If you had not died, we would not have the right to approach you and ask you. But because you died for our sin, pay the price to redeem us, to buy us back. We don't have to keep living in sin. We don't have to, we don't have to die, spend our eternity separated from you. But we have a right, we have a privilege of, of inheriting everlasting life. Thank you, God. And it's my prayer on this morning that if anybody needs you, that they would come. Have your way in this time of invitation in the precious name of Jesus. I pray and I believe you'll do it. Amen. And amen. Can we stand to our feet and as the Spirit of the Lord speaks in this place, I invite you to come. Counselors are coming down front. Ministers, counselors will be available to you. Today, I'm not asking you to say I'm an immoral person. I just want you to be able to say, Lord, I need you. And if you've never trusted him and your eternity is not secure in him then I'd invite you to come because guess what at the end of this life each one of us is gonna to have to stand before God and give account for what we've done in this body the day of judgment is coming for everybody and we need to be able to say on that day Lord I've accepted you as Lord of my life I've accepted you as Savior of my life because for those who can't say that on that day when the books are open and the, the names are read from the Lamb's Book of Life, the Bible says that all those whose names are not found in the Lamb's Books of Life shall be cast into an everlasting fire, a lake of fire. That fire really wasn't made for us, but if we reject this free gift of everlasting life, that's our eternity. That's, that's where we spend it, burning every day forever and always being, always being burned but never consumed 
always experiencing the torment of hell and the torment of the fire. That, that's the end. But God says, I've, I've died. I've given my life to, to, to rescue you from that. I want you to know that you know that you know that if you leave here today that you would immediately be in the presence of God. That's what this invitation is all about. I want you to be sure that if you die today that you would go to heaven, that you would be with God. No, nobody should be walking around thinking and questioning, nah, maybe I think I might go. No, you, this is something you want to know. So if that's you on today, I invite you to come if you're listening via live stream and you're in a place where you want to surrender your heart and your life to Jesus. Just text the word surrendering to the number that appears on your screen, 301-900-6555. Just text the word surrendering. You want to surrender your life to the Lord, a video is going to come up. It's going to explain to you exactly what you need to do to surrender your heart and your life to Jesus. It'll walk you through the scripture. It'll show you text by text what you need to do. Keep away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. Oh, my life is not my own to you i belong i give myself i give myself to you now if you're here and you looking for a church home i'd like to open the doors of the church for you come unite with kettering baptist church We'd love for you to unite with us. Be a member here with us. As God leads and as he speaks to your heart, we just want you to come. This is a place where you're going to grow in the wisdom of God and the knowledge of God, where the Bible is a textbook every Sunday. We just invite you to come. Come as God leads your heart. If you're viewing via live stream and you want to connect with us, you want to commit to membership here at Kettering Baptist Church, you can do that via live stream as well. You just text the word committing. I want to commit to membership with Kettering. You text the word committing to the same number and a video will come up. It'll receive your information and you'll be able to be connected with us and we'll connect you with our new members classes so you can understand what we believe and why we believe it according to the scripture. But if God is speaking to you on today and if he's tugging at your heart and he's saying to you, you know what? You've been floating around and floating around and floating around. You need to connect. You need to make a commitment to be a part of a body of believers. And God's been tugging on your strings and saying, this is where I need you to be. This category is where I'm keep sitting to you. This is the place where I've, I have for you. Then, then come on today. Don't, don't be shy. You come on today. We'd be glad to have you. If you're afraid to walk by yourself, you just raise your hand. We'll send somebody to come get you. I know sometimes it's difficult to be, you know, walk up in front of all these people. I don't want all those people looking at me. But don't be ashamed this morning. We'll come get you. We'll come walk with you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Finally, on this morning, if you've got any special prayer concerns that you want to lay before the Lord on this morning, I want to invite you to the altar on today that we might talk to God. We might commit those concerns to the Lord, whether it's health, finances, family, children, whatever it may be that you need to talk to God about. You need to lay some burdens on him. Maybe you've been in some scenarios. You've been in some situations that you know this morning that I need to correct. I need, I need to get right. Maybe, maybe you've been living a life that's outside of the the morality of God outside of God's will as it relates to your sexual positions it's never too late to say to God God forgive me of my sin and I, I want to clean myself I want to clean up I want to get right with you never too late to do that while you have breath in your body mm -hmm. my life is not my own to you I belong I give
give myself, I give myself to you. Oh, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, give myself to you. Give myself away. Yeah. I give myself away so you can use me. Give myself away. Father, as we bow before you on this morning, we come with hearts full of thanksgiving that you would care about us enough to give us opportunity to approach your throne of grace and mercy father thank you for all that you've done and thank you for all you're doing even right now in the midst and in the lives of your people god i pray with my brothers and my sisters this morning that you would look in on our hearts and look in on our life and if there's anything, Heavenly Father, that we've done that was not of you, by you, or pleasing to you, Lord, that you would forgive us of our sin. Cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Lord, we want to be able to talk to you on this morning and have our prayer come up before you. And we know if there's sin in our life and if there's distraction in our life from you, God, that that won't happen. And so, God, forgive us this morning. Father, we yield to you only this morning. We say you are our Father, you are holy, and you are the one who sits high and yet looks low. You're, you're the one in glory that makes intercession for us. We bow before you, God, this morning, and we give your name the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise for you, Lord, are worthy of the glory in our life. And Father, as we come on this morning, God, we come recognizing and realizing we can't do anything without you and so eternal God we come to say help us Jesus help us in our struggles help us in our trials help us in our tribulations help us God as we wrestle in this flesh to live a life that's pleasing in your sight God for those my brothers and my sisters who are dealing with and struggling with immorality and and it, the, and, the, and the immoral one has drawn them away God I'm praying that you rescue them today I'm praying God that you open up their eyes to the traps and the tricks that the devil has put in their path I, I pray God that you would present to them the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding if they've already been hooked up with somebody who's got bait and somebody who's trying to lure them away from you God I pray in the name of Jesus that you would expose the traps and tricks of the devil I pray God in the name of Jesus that you would open up their eyes that you would open up their heart and give them a passion and give them a desire to chase after you Lord father we need you we need you in these last days and times because the enemy has saturated the atmosphere with everything that's not like you they've he's normalized this immorality he's normalized this sexual impurity he's normalized sinfulness and dishonor of your kingdom and dishonor of your holiness and God we come this morning to say we need you Jesus we need you to draw us back we need you to clean us up we need you to forgive us and change our hearts. Spirit of the Lord, draw us to you. Draw us to your wisdom. Draw us to your knowledge, God. Help us, Lord God, that we might live a life that pleases you. Father, some this morning have come to the altar hurting. They're hurting for the loss of loved ones. They're hurting for scenarios that are playing out in their lives and they say Lord my tears are on the altar today God wipe their tears away listen to the the heartbeat of their hurt this morning I know you have a way of wrapping your arms around and and just comforting I, I pray you would bring comfort to them and peace to their heart warmth to their spirit Spirit of the Lord, I'm praying that you would guide them through this journey that they're going through. Whether their need is financial or emotional or spiritual, we know you to be a God that's able to provide every need we have. 
So I pray with my brothers, I pray with my sisters this morning that you would be their sufficiency. That you would provide the finances, that you would provide the change, that you would provide the health as they present sickness before you. You're a healer, God. You have a way of healing that, that, that goes beyond the imagination of man. Lord, you can speak a word from on high. Cancer can be ridden from our bodies. Blood pressure can come down. Stress can be relieved. You have a way, God. You've got a way of doing what nobody else can do, what doctors and surgeons and medical professionals can't even comprehend. And God, when you do what you do, you're not practicing medicine. You are the medicine. And so we come this morning because we need your medicine. We need your healing. We need your help, God. Spirit, touch each soul. Touch each body. Touch each person that's in need of you this day, God. Speak peace to their heart and healing to their spirit and their body, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would be with every family at this altar, every marriage, every relationship, God. I pray, Lord, that you would, that, that you would just reveal reveal the truth cause us God to be able to acknowledge our own errors cause us to be forgiving of one another even as you forgave us but not foolish enough to let the immoral one or the seductress lure us away thinking that it was all our fault no Help us, God, to walk this journey carefully to avoid the hurts and the damages and the destructions that the enemy has planned for our life. We want to be victorious with you. We want to choose the right person. We want to be with the right mate. We want to be in the center of your will. So, Spirit of God, help us. Be with families, God, that are struggling this morning. Be with the children who have a need today. God, I pray in the midst of all that's going on in this world that you would be a fence all around us. Have your way, Lord Jesus. And Father, there are those who've lost loved ones who are grieving. There are those, Lord God, who are, who are hospitalized this morning. There are some walking the street that don't have a place to call home. There are others, Lord, who've lost their homes to earthquakes and floods and fires and, and disaster has struck the family through, through violence. And God, there are people that are hurting who are in desperate need of you. I pray for them today, God. I lift them up before you. I ask God that you would do a work and work a work that is miraculous in their life. God, be with that soldier who's on the battlefield, that missionary that's on the mission field. God, be with the war-torn areas of Iran and Iraq and, and over in the Middle East, God, all the turmoil that's going on there. We put it in your hands. You're in full control and we trust you, God, to work it all out to your honor and to your glory. Father, bless the leaders of this country, our cities, our towns, our churches, our homes. Bless the leaders in this world, Heavenly Father, even to the President of these United States. We put them in your care and we, we trust you, God, because you're the head of all things and we trust you. So now, God, we bless your holy name and we thank you for the answers to prayer. We came to the altar and we laid it here and we're going to leave it here at this altar. We're not dragging it back to the pew. It's going to stay here at the altar. And we're trusting that nothing is too hard for you. So you work it out, God. And we bless you, God. We bless you right now in advance because we know you've already worked it out. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. Thank you, Jesus, for handling our problem. Thank you, God for resolving our issue. Thank you in advance, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And all the people of God said amen and amen. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own. To you I belong. 
I give myself, I give myself to you. Oh, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. I give myself away Whoa. I give myself away So you can use me Give myself away Let all the church say amen Let's give God a great amen. hand of praise Bless the Lord in this place on today for all that has transpired we thank god for his amazing 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 grace as we prepare to leave on today i just want to remind you on next sunday next coming next sunday the 21st we're going to have here on next sunday our mortgage burning ceremony Bless the name of the Lord. And I can't even tell you how excited I am about that. And um, we're going to have just a glorious time on next week uh, with our mortgage burning ceremony and some uh, some festivities that will go along with that. But just looking forward to that on next Sunday. We invite you to, to be a part of that. Be present. Amen. If you can be present, be, please be present on next Sunday. Uh, 10 o'clock is the time that services start. Amen. I, I just thought I'd help you out. You know, so I saw a whole lot of people coming late. And I was like, maybe they didn't know what time service started. We started at 10. Um, but next Sunday, we really look forward to you being here and celebrating with us. I believe this is a great, great accomplishment that God has done through us. Amen. And a great, a great witness to the world around us and to the, the, the rest of the body of Christ. So we look forward to that on next Sunday. Please, please, please um, come show up that we can celebrate together and give God all of the glory for what he's done. Uh, for all of our first-time guests, I'd love to meet with you for a few moments in room 173, out the back doors to your left. The ushers and greeters will direct you there. I uh, promise not to keep you all day, but I do want to greet you more formally. And... Uh, we look forward to, to meeting with you in 173, room 173. I think I covered everything. Youth lock in registration. If you've got youth between the ages of 12 and 18, I think, 17, um, please make sure you, you, you go on to the website and register, whatever you need to do for that. Um, if you don't know how to do that, also in your pews, there are QR codes. You can scan a QR code. All the announcements and everything are on those little QR codes in your pews in front of you. Uh, and, and you can just kind of click there and it'll take you right to the um, site for the registration for the youth lock-in. All right. All hearts and minds clear. I don't see nobody waving and jumping up and down be good all right let's pray father thank you for today thank you for your word thank you for the worship thank you for the experiences that we've had on this day lord god thank you for our children who who are used today to glorify you in such an awesome and amazing way lord we just pray now as we get ready to leave this place that you would cover each person with your grace and your protection guide them safely over the highways and the byways allow them to arrive safely at their places and points of destination keep us all god in the center of your holy and divine will now to the king who is eternal the everlasting and all wise God to him belongs all the glory all the dominion and all the power both now henceforth and forevermore all the people of God said together amen amen God bless you Ketterman we love you thank you for tuning in to today's worship service if you are a first time visitor please text connecting to 301 9006555 if you would like to become a member of Kettering Baptist Church, text COMMITTING to 301-900-6555. And if you are accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, text SURRENDERING to 301-900-6555.